Hi, this is Paul Purdue, the infrastructure nerd. <laughs> Starting just a little bit late for our World Docs webinar, we are going to talk about World Docs today. World Docs is a document management system, or has us people that are nerds who like initials like to call them a DMS. Uh, there are several. And there's iManage, there's a couple other of the big boys like iManage, and there's World Docs. There's also your practice management system, Practice Master, Time Matters, Amicus. Uh, they tend to have document management elements to them. We're going to kind of talk about what the differences are. Um, World Docs has positioned itself as a leader in the, the market that we tend to serve, and that is the 1 to 100 attorney firm. Uh, World Docs is, is priced right for that firm. It has the feature set that's right for that firm. It can compete against the more expensive products, uh, but still do it in such a way that, that this size firm can afford it. Now, before we get started talking about that, because I already have, let's look at this real quickly. This is your uh, go to webinar control panel. It should be over on the right. Now, some of you may just be seeing this little part. That may be because you already know how to operate this thing. This little button here that looks like an arrow pointing to the right is just that. And if you click it, it will take this big thing and get it out of the way. Uh, you can also expand the window that my screen is in by pressing that middle button in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, so if it's, if it's small, if it's only showing on part of your screen, you can expand it so that it fills up your whole screen and you see as clearly as possible. Uh, if you want to get this out of here, just press this button. And when you do, this will slide away. This will be the only thing showing. And this button will sh turn into a button with the arrow pointing to the left. What that means is that if you want to slide this back out, you can press the button to the left. And it just keeps sliding it in and out and in and out until you figure out where you want it to be. Now. The reason to slide it back out again is because you're shy and you want to ask a question. If you type the question here, uh, Leanne will uh, uh, notice it and then wait for the appropriate moment and will ask your question on your behalf. If you have follow-up questions, just keep typing them. Leanne is very observant and will just keep asking your questions on your behalf until they're done. Um, if you are feeling not shy, Instead of sliding out the control panel and typing your question, you can click this button, which looks like a hand with an arrow in front of it. And it means, you guessed it, raise your hand. So if you want to raise your hand, uh, Leanne will notice that. At an appropriate time, she will interrupt me, ask, uh, unmute you, and let you ask your question. And then she'll mute you back up once you get everything answered so that you can continue eating lunch or doing whatever it is you're doing uh, without disturbing anybody else. So without further ado, we'll get rid of that. And we'll start talking. Now, World Docs um, is, as I said, document management. What is document management? It's not to be confused with assembling documents. Some practice management systems will allow you to generate a motion for enlargement of time, or a letter, or a medical records request, or an employment agreement, or whatever. Um, that's assembling documents. World Docs is what you do with documents after they've been assembled whether you assemble them through your practice management software or you just type them from scratch like you're doing right now. Um, hold on one second, please. Hmm, okay. I'm sorry. We're getting a message that our recording has stopped, but our recording is still going, we hope. <laughs> so, um, World Docs is what stores those documents and emails and Excel spreadsheets and PDFs of things that you receive either in email or that you get in hard copy and then scan. World Docs or any document management system is going to help you to organize those things so that you can find them quickly. Now, as I said, here we work a lot with Practice Master, so I'll show you it from this perspective. Your document management system, uh, your, your practice management system may have some elements that will allow you to store documents, but they're usually going to be pretty rudimentary. And beyond that, there's one thing that is the number one reason why people will go with a document management system as opposed to what's built into their practice management system, and that is compliance. Now, I'm going to very quickly go over here. I'm going to pull up Purdue Law, and I'm going to edit this so that you can see the document management page. 
And so if you have a practice management system, you probably have a way to pull up clients. And when you pull up a client, you can go to the document management page and see the documents for that matter. Now, that's all well and good. Uh, and in a minute, I'll demonstrate the main difference between practice management-based document management and a real document management system like WorldDocs. A lot of differences, but there's one that usually is what people hinge on when they decide whether to get a real document management system or uh, something that's part of their practice management. Um, another thing that you'll want to know is that WorldDocs will, whether you have Time Matters or, or um, Practice Master or Amicus, whatever you have, World Docs will most likely hook into it like this. If I pull up Purdue Law Offices and say I want to display World Docs documents, bam, there I am looking at a bunch of documents that are specific to Purdue Law Offices, specific to this particular client matter. Also, if I am in my practice management system and I enter a new matter, uh, it should automatically go over to World Docs. You shouldn't have to also go into World Docs and say, here's a new client or here's a new matter for an existing client. This integration should be there. And I know that this works with Time Matters, um, not quite as well as it works with Practice Master, and I'm pretty sure it works with Amicus. So if you have a practice management system, one of the things you want to consider is whether or not it's going to integrate to provide that level of uh, streamlined infrastructure where you add a matter or a new client in the practice management system and it instantly goes over to to your document management system, World Docs, in this example. Now, um, here is World Docs, and you're thinking to yourself, that's not World Docs, that's Word. And so I'm going to type a very simple document. I can't type and talk at the same time. And I'm going to go to save it. And I'm going to do so by clicking this button, but I could also press Control-S, and I could press uh, File and then Save or Save As. I could do anything I would do to save this. And when I do, there's World Docs. And it says, how are we going to put it away? That's a client matter. And I'm going to put it in as World Docs Sample. And I'm going to put it away with Purdue Law. And it's their matter zero, and it's just a sample document. This is my doc type, and bam, I have saved this to World Docs. Now that right there is the number one reason that people choose World Docs or any real document management system over a practice management based document management system compliance. It pops when you're going to save, and it pops when you're going to find. And by that I mean you cannot save something without it going into World Docs. And for most firms, that's a very important element of real document management. For some, it's not. For some, they even will turn that off, and they'll let people break out and save it outside the scope of World Docs. But to me, that's kind of circumventing a, a big part of what World Docs can do for you as a firm. Uh, another is, of course, you know, there are a lot of other things. There's the ability to find things across all matters and all clients, the ability to do versioning, the ability to do document stamping, automatic archiving, automatic uh, document uh, destruction, uh, automatic uh, salvage bin emptying, if you will, uh, all managed from a central location through a document management system. Here, for instance, is an example of a versioning. If I go to uh, create a new version of this document, type some more text, and go to File, Save As. World Docs pops up and says, okay, well, how do you want to save this? Do you want to replace it? Do you just want to get you know, rid of the old document and have the new document saved? No, we want to save it as version 2. And now when I go to look for a document, by popping up World Docs and looking at my favorites, you'll see that this World Docs sample has two versions. And if we double click on the document, it'll actually open the version list and show me the two document, different versions of the document, and let me choose which one I want to open. Now that's huge from a managing version standpoint, because if you've ever tried to do this without document management and just done it within the scope of your um, your Windows Explorer, which is how most people keep track of their documents, they just store them in folders on a network drive somewhere 
organized by client and then matter, and usually some subfolders like pleadings and correspondence and email or however they want to do it. Uh, when you try to do it that way, naming your document for that versioning is very, very important because you want to try and keep them together. And yet at the same time, you want to be able to sort them different ways, and that takes your versions and makes them go all over the place. And it's pretty hard to keep those versions together and know exactly how many versions of a document you have. Here it's different. What you're really doing is looking at it as one document that happens to have many versions. So when you go to sort things and look at them from different perspectives, you see that as one document. You don't lose track of the fact that it's got different versions, and you don't lose track of how many different versions there are. Now, of course, World Docs is not just there to save documents, but it's there to retrieve them. So therefore, if we go to File and Open, again, World Docs pops up. Now, it depends on what you're in as to what you see. Right now, I'm looking at my most recent things. Uh, actually, I'm looking at World Docs because I had it open. If I try it now, File, Open, now, it still points to that because that's what I've set it to do. Um, a lot of firms will have it simply show your most recent Word documents when you open from Word and your most recent Excel documents when you open from Excel. I have it set to show me my most recent documents across the board. And I could actually open, so even though I clicked on Open from Word, I could actually double click on one of these emails. And it tells me that Word cannot open it. So uh, I, I'm protected from opening the wrong thing in the wrong area. But this is the way I've got World Docs set to work. Uh, that, again, is, is part, of the, part of the beauty of it. It's a, a unified, centralized management of how these things work for your user's experience across a network. So you have the ability to manage this, this document store and how it's accessed and how it's controlled from a central location instead of having to go from machine to machine to machine to machine trying to set up people's preferences and how they open documents in Word versus Excel versus whatever. Now, World Docs then becomes in this closed environment, and that, by the way, is what we call the difference between the practice management-based document management and a document management system-based document management. World Docs is closed. Practice Master or Time Matters or uh, any of the other practice management systems are open. What that means is when I click on File Open, if I'm in Word or Excel or even just click on World Docs, I'm going to get World Docs. When I click on Save, no matter where I am, I'm going to get World Docs. That's a closed document management system. On the other hand, if I'm in a practice management system and I go and create a document and I want to save it, I can save it the old-fashioned way and circumvent the system. I can go around the system and not save it to practice management. I have to press a special button to make that document go to practice master or time matters or whatever. And that is, in my mind, bad. If an attorney pulls up a list of documents and he or she has any question in their mind about whether or not that's a complete set of documents for that particular matter, that's a problem. And if that's the problem, then the closed nature of World Docs, or frankly any true document management system, is going to make that really shine. Now, let's jump over here to Outlook. And let's take this article and uh, this list of articles from, from STI. And let's actually jump down. I'm going to jump to my deleted items because I don't want to move that. Yeah, no, we'll take this. Uh, we'll take this, and we will copy it to World Docs. Email is a big part of document management. In fact, it's more than half of how lawyers these days are communicating with their clients. We see less and less letters that are being printed, uh, more and more emails that are being sent. Uh, either containing letters that are kind of an e-letter, if you will, or just containing communication in the body of the email itself. And so World Docs allows you to either copy or move those documents um, from Outlook into World Docs. And you can do that directly from within your Outlook folder. So if I take this email and I want to copy it to World Docs, and I'm going to put it in Purdue Law Offices, and I'm going to put it in a 00, zero matter, and I'm going to say it's an email, Bam, I have taken that document and I have put it in World Docs for Purdue Law Offices. If I now go into World Docs and pull up Purdue Law Offices, no matter how I do it, I can just do it that way, the direct way, bam. There's a sample we created with the two versions. There is the email. Now, keep in mind, 
when it's here, even if you put it in a folder over here for Purdue Law Offices, it's still in my mailbox and nobody else's. It's still in a state where nobody else can see it. So I run into this all the time. I have lawyers that say, oh, well, I'm putting my emails away by, by client and by matter, but they're doing it in Outlook, and it's done usually in such a way that nobody else can see it. Um, once it's in World Docs, anybody can see it. Anybody can pull up the Purdue Law matter or the Purdue Law client and see this email. Now, another thing about that is that when I go in to find something, I can say I want to find all documents that have certain text in the document or certain text in just the name or the comment. Now, so that you're clear, if I go in here and pull up this thing that we call the profile that we filled out just a minute ago, this is the name and this is the comment, and the comment's actually a very large field that can hold a lot of text. When I tell it in the search feature that I want to search in the name or the comment, that's what I'm searching, but when I tell it I want to search for text in the file, it's searching the entire document and all of them. So as you can see, I could come in here and leave client and matter blank and search for the word Purdue, and when I do so, I'm searching all of my documents, not just the ones for a specific matter. So naturally, my name's Purdue, so I'm going to find a lot. Let's see if we can find um, pleading. <laughs> you can tell I don't practice law. I don't have any document that has the word pleading in it. Let's see if we can find the word Oh, thank you. Leanne points out to me that I'm typing into the wrong field. Sometimes I get a little lost here. Okay, I do have six, five documents that have the word pleading in them, in the document itself. So here I can say I want to search just that name, but I can also say I want to search all the text in the document. Now, keep in mind, let me do this one more time. Watch. One, two seconds and it searched all my documents. I could be a law firm with 35 or 50 attorneys, and it would find those documents, however many there were, just as quickly as it did for me where we've got four or five people working within World Docs. The reason is that things are indexed. Uh, that's not what you're getting when you're putting things away in the folder structure that you are now in your network drive. Things are going very slow. I don't know if you're familiar with the dog scratching the dirt when you tell it you want to find something. Some people don't even know they can find things that way using Windows Explorer. Uh, but you don't really have that capability to say, I want to find all the documents that have the word pleading in them, but I only want the ones that were created between 14 days ago and today. Only one. Or to say that I want that same thing, all the words, all the pleadings, but only those that were done by a certain person, certain author, or that also have a certain word here, or that are for a certain client, regardless of what matter it might be for that client. Or maybe you want the word, all the documents that have the word pleadings in them for a specific client and a specific matter for that client. That's part of the power of a World Docs type system. It's not just being able to put them away in the right place. It's not just being able to call them up by matter, by client. It's also the ability to be able to find them when you don't know who the matter, who the client is or what the matter is. Very, very important. Let me look at my notes here. I tend to kind of babble and wander. Okay. Another thing, when I profile an email, I can also have it create something called a quick profile. Now, what that quick profile means is, and I have a couple down here that are kind of you know, samples that I use in demonstrating World Docs, I can take an email or a group of emails that I either select all in a row or that I uh, select you know, using click and then shift click to select them you know, all together. However I want to do it, I can grab a group of emails, drag them to a specific matter, let go, and move them to that matter all at once. 
So when I have 12 or 14 or 18 different matters that are very hot right now for me as a lawyer that I'm working very diligently on and there's a lot of emails flying back and forth, I can create these quick profiles over here under my World Docs folder in Outlook. And then I can, at the end of the day or halfway through the day or whenever I want, I can grab a bunch of emails from any box, from the inbox, sent items, deleted items, wherever. I can grab those emails, drag them over, and let go of 20 emails at a time, 200 emails at a time, and it will instantly profile those to that specific matter. Beyond that, I can also click on one of these, and it's like loading World Docs for that particular matter right within Outlook. So for lawyers and paralegals that kind of live in Outlook all day long, they don't even need to go outside of Outlook to do most of the document management and email management functionality that they need to perform during their day. Now, they do still have World Docs down here, and so they can still go into it by clicking this little W. But a lot of what they can do or want to do can be done within the confines of Outlook simply by clicking on the appropriate folder or by dragging these emails to that folder and letting go. Um, gosh, I've pretty much talked about everything that's on my list, except how it's set up. And so I'm going to jump over here. And I'm going to talk to you about this for a second. We are currently on World Docs version GX3. And there are three different ways to hook it up. Now, for those people that just have a regular network and they just want to be able to have World Docs on that network, we have what's called GX3 Professional. Now, for those of you who have been familiar with World Docs for a while, this is the way World Docs has always been. It has always been GX3 uh, it's, I'm sorry, it's always been this professional configuration. What that means is you have a server that has your World Docs documents on it. You have a separate machine that does not have to be a server grade machine. It can just be a workstation grade machine, but it should be dedicated to this task that serves as what we call the indexer. That kind of does all the work and takes that need for computing power away from the server, puts it on a separate machine, and then you have all your computers within the network that can access those documents. Now what that means is that when you're at home or at the, uh, the, the cottage or in a coffee shop or you're sitting somewhere on your iPad and, and you cannot really get to these documents unless you have some way to connect to your network using terminal services or a VPN connection or go to my PC or log me in. Any of those things to connect to a machine back here will get you to your documents outside the office because what you're doing is you're connecting to your network before you do that. That's the way World Docs has always been. And until GX3, that was the only way you could get to documents from outside the office. They have released this, uh, these new capabilities, two of them, within the GX3 line. And the next one is Enterprise. And with Enterprise, you pay a bit extra quite a bit extra, actually. Uh, but you get an enterprise server and put it in your office. It hooks into this World Docs documents server. Your people in the office still get to the documents the same way they always did. But the enterprise server enables people outside the office to get to those documents without actually having to connect to your network. They don't have to connect to a desktop. They don't have to connect using log me in or go to my PC. They just go out to the client's office or they go home on their home computer or they go to a coffee shop in you know Valparaiso or wherever they happen to be traveling that day and they open up their laptop and they start typing and when they hit save, World Docs pops up just like it always does as long as it's got an internet connection and it takes that document and puts it back on the enterprise through the enterprise server in your normal World Docs document store. So if this guy who's sitting in that coffee shop in Valparaiso, I believe I said, saves that document and then two minutes later calls his, his, his associate who's working at this machine here, that person will be able to pull that document up because they are both looking at and saving from the same server. Now the other way to do it, this has everything in your office. And most of our clients, that's the way they do it. But for some smaller clients, this might be a better way to do it. Uh, it doesn't require any hardware in your office except for your, your computers you already have. It's called GX3 Cloud. And it actually takes all of your documents, puts them into World Docs with the indexer and the document server residing in a World Docs hosted data center. 
So everything you have lives, document-wise, lives in the cloud, if you will. It's very, very secure. This data center is, is bank-grade security if, or, or even governmental-grade security as far as nobody being able to get in and get those documents. But then, whether you're in the office or whether you're out on the road or at home, you are always accessing those documents through the cloud. Now, this costs about $55 or $60 per user per month, but has absolutely no hardware and maintenance costs uh, on the and, and no World Docs licensing costs on your local network. This one here, um, you have the cost of World Docs plus the cost of the enterprise server. The enterprise server, just in case you're curious, is $5,000 plus $1,000 a year in maintenance. And in this scenario, you have a cost of world, for World Docs of about $425 per user for the licensing and $88 per user per year for maintenance. Now here, the one thing you have to understand is that you can have these $425 World Docs licenses for all those computers that are in your network and will never leave your network. But for ones that go outside the network also, you have to get a, a slightly more expensive license. It's called their, their thin client or their, their cloud client or their cloud license, and that's $495 as opposed to $425. Now, Leanne's giving me that look that says she has a question, so I'm going to let Leanne bump me and, and ask that question for someone. The question is, um, what size law firm were you recommending this for? Well, I have one client. I don't know if he's here. He signed up. He is one guy, and when he first got his system, I talk about him a lot, David, um, when he first got his system, he was one guy with no legal assistant and he had World Docs. Uh, that's a little unusual. I have some client, I have another client um, that has, a, he's a, a one attorney and there are two legal assistants and they're part of a bigger firm, but they're totally separate in their documents. They're kind of, they have a very unique practice area that no, nobody else crosses into. And so there you have three people within a firm. That, now, that's very unusual, very, very unusual. It's usually a whole firm that's doing this. Um, I have clients as small as five, six attorneys. Of course, I have the one guy that's just one attorney. Uh, and I have clients as large, our largest client is 72 attorneys. Um, so World Docs works in any size firm, and we see more and more of the small to mid-sized firms. Your four or five attorney firms, your 10 to 12 attorney firms, putting in World Docs, uh, simply because that's the next thing to do. They've probably got their billing and accounting and their practice management figured out. Now it's time to look at document management. Another question? The next question is, um, is World Docs compatible with a Citrix environment? It is. Uh, Citrix is what we call a thin client. Now in my example here, I said with just the professional, the way to get in is to use log me in or go to my PC or a terminal server. Uh, Citrix is something that lives on top of a terminal server environment. It's kind of an extension of terminal server. And yes, World Docs works very, very well within a, what we call, this is a nerd term, so excuse me, a thin client approach. And what that means is you've got a computer over here. Let's go to this picture, but let's pretend that this computer is just hooking in to this, this network. We don't have this enterprise server. This computer would connect to something here that is going to run World Docs and all the other programs that they're running when they're connected and merely send screenshots and keyboard strokes, keystrokes and mouse movements back and forth. And that's what they mean when they say thin client. Your program doesn't actually travel to this computer to load. World Docs doesn't have to pull in the entire document store in order to be able to search through it. Uh, World Docs if you're running uh, Practice Master it doesn't have to load the entire program here. It loads it here and, and has uh, screenshots that go back and forth. That's called thin client. That's what Citrix is. And yes, World Docs works great in the Citrix environment. And up until GX3's release, it was the only way to get to your documents uh, was through something like that. Citrix terminal services, log me in, go to my PC. Any more questions, Leanne? OK. Well, I, I guess that's that then. Um, if anybody does think of questions after the fact, if you simply send me an email, uh, it's paul.purdue at attorneycomputersystems.com. Systems is plural. Purdue's like the school, not the chicken. 
So paul.purdue at attorneycomputersystems.com. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good afternoon, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.